Okay, in this very short video, we're going to take a look at Arclone on Microsoft Windows. Uh, so Arclone you can find at arclone.org. Uh, and as you can see, it's described as a sync for cloud storage. Um, so in essence, what this application allows you to do is to synchronize uh, files and folders from uh, a number of remote locations, such as these ones they have displayed here and the local file system. So the reason I use this is to, to transfer data from my local machine at home to uh, Google Drive. One of the, the benefits of Google, or sorry, with Rclone, from my opinion, is the encryption. So you can apply encryption to the, the transfers that you do. So the content that, let's say you have content on your machine such as videos or photos or anything really that you don't want the remote provider to see. So let's say I don't want Google Drive to see the videos that I've uploaded there. Then our clone will encrypt the data as we transfer it to and from. And that's what we're going to look at in this demo today. One point to note is that this video does focus on Windows, but if you are using our clone on a Linux machine, you can use the Fuse mount, and what that does is uh, mounts the remote as a file system. So if you would like, um, let's say we want a, we want our Google Drive or Amazon Cloud Drive to show as a, a file system within um, our system, our machine, and to encrypt the data as it transfers to and from, then you can use Fuse mount uh, to do that only on a Linux system that the Windows option doesn't allow that to happen. So we're going to start by going to downloads um, and I'm just going to download the 64-bit version here and I'll save that down to my desktop just now. And all the other versions are here as well. The documentation for our clone is available here under docs so there is some installation but for Windows it's so straightforward. Uh, usage, so if we click into usage um, there are some detailed instructions for setting up the remotes so for Google Drive, this is the, the excuse me the detailed instructions. Um, and then if we go down to the subcommands, these are the commands that we can use. So by order of popularity. So the first thing we do is our clone config, uh, and our clone copy, sync, move. So we will look at some of these basic ones just now. So I've downloaded our clone. I'm going to extract it here. Let's do my desktop just now. Um, and I'm going to name that folder R clone. And just for ease in this example, I'll put that onto my C drive. And we'll open our command prompt. And we're going to the R clone folder. So the very first thing we have to do is type in R clone config. And you may find on your machine, it may take a moment or two for the, the, the detail to come up on the screen. I, I don't understand why this happens to me on this machine. I use our clone on another machine where this isn't a problem, but on this machine, for some reason, uh, sporadically, our clone has a delay between me submitting a command and it responding, as you can see here. So the first thing it's told us is that there's no remotes found and to create a new one. So I'm going to press N because I'm creating a new remote and I need to give it a name and I'll call it G drive. We then have to select what remote it is. So you can see they have numbers. So Amazon drive is one, um, a local disk would be nine and I'm using Google drive, which is seven. So I'm just going to type in seven. Uh, now, Google Drive has an automatic setup function, so the client ID and the secret uh, can be left blank, so we just press enter on both of those. And then we get asked if we want to use autoconfig, so I'm going to say yes, and it will open up a browser window like this, where we have to sign in to our Google Drive account. And we're giving our clone the permissions to, to view and manage the files on your Google Drive. And that's kind of required for what we're doing here, so I'm going to say allow. Success, go back to our clone, so I'll close this window now. 
and it's pulled through some information which you can't see. I've blanked that out just now. So I'm just going to say the information that's done there is fine. And I'll say yes, this is okay. And we have G Drive as you can see there. And I'm going to press Q to quit because I'm quite happy with that one remote I've set up. And I can now do a demonstration for you to see how that works. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up an Internet Explorer window and open my Google Drive and let's take a look at what we have. So we have two folders, we have shared and secure. Um, and shared is some content that I've shared with other people and secure is where the backups are going from my other machine. So if I go into secure, this is what you get and that makes no sense to anyone. So I'm going to go back to the root of the drive and we'll, we'll work from the root just now. So I'll just minimize this. So th there are only two folders there. So let's create a, a basic file within this R clone folder just now. And we'll call it test. This is a test file. And I'll save that. And we're going to move it. So I'm going to do R clone, sorry I'm not going to move it, I'm going to copy it. R clone copy test dot text and I can just type in the file name because I'm in the R clone folder and then we type in the name of a remote and we know it's a remote because we have a colon at the end of it and I'll put a forward slash just so that we know we're targeting the root directory of our remote. I'll press return and again oh, our clone is going to pause while it works through that command. I'll pause the video this time. And that's done. Now one thing I forgot to mention was the verbose switch that tells you what's happening. Uh, so let's very quickly go to the Google Drive and you can see that test file is there. Uh, and if I preview that file you can see the contents that I put in there. Let's do that again. So I'm just going to leave that test file there just now. And this time I'm going to create test2. Test2. This is test2. And we'll save that. And I'm going to basically run the same command again. I'll clone copy. Although this time I'll put in a switch for verbose. And this means that we're asking the, the R clone to tell us what it's doing. Test2.text and again g drive colon forward slash okay and the commands run so you can see it gives us information as to what it's done uh, the first thing it does is do does a check to see if the file is there already or not um, if the file was there we have options to overwrite or don't overwrite or you know what to use as a change um, so you can see it's transferred to 15 bytes um, no errors, no checks, and it's transferred to one file, and it did it in 25 seconds. Um, I don't know why there's a delay when I execute these commands, um, but, but there you go. So now we'll go back to the drive, and test2 is there, and again we can preview, and we can see the contents of that. So I'm just going to do away with these two folders just now. I'm going to create a new folder and call it private stuff, like this. So I've just created a new folder called private stuff and there's nothing in there. And I'll delete these two test files. Um, and this time we're going to set up a new remote. So we're going to do our clone config again. And what we're going to do this time is set up the encrypted remote. So we have content on our machine we want to put on Google Drive and we want it encrypted, so we're going to, to do that this time around. So the first thing we have to do as we do that is to, to set up a new remote, an encryption remote. Um, we don't pick the first remote and change it to an encryption remote, so we have to first set up the initial remote, which is our G drive. We will then set up a new remote, which is a crypt, and we will crypt the G drive uh, and provide a password for that. So I'm going to press N for new remote and we'll give it a name. So I'm going to call it G drive crypt and we have to select the type this time. 
and you can see number five is encrypt or decrypt a remote. So we'll say number five. And we have to select the remote that we want to encrypt. Um, now this part you want to pay attention. So we're going to put in G drive, first of all. Now, what we're actually going to do is provide the folder that we want to put the content into. So you may remember I called the folder private stuff. So what we're going to do here is type in private stuff. Now, what this is going to do is, um, is make the root of the G Drive crypt remote. The root of that remote is going to be the, the private stuff folder. So when we send stuff to the Gcrypt remote, uh, the yeah the Gcrypt remote, it's going to go into the root of the private stuff folder, and that allows us to keep our encrypted content uh, in one place. So, I'm going to press return. Uh, we then get given the option: do we want to encrypt the file names of our contents? Um, so we can say no, um, and that'll encrypt the content, but it won't encrypt the file names. Uh, now for this test we're going to encrypt the file names so it's number two and we we can either have our clone generate a random password for us or we can type in our own password so I'm going to make mine's um, I'm going to type in my own password so we're going to say yes and I'll make mine's a very basic password for quickness and we'll confirm that now when you do this for the first time you want to make sure you take a note of that password somewhere um, because if you lose that password and you upload a lot of content to your G Drive, there's no way you're going to get it back. You can then salt your password if you'd like to do so. It's almost like a, a second uh, layer of security. Um, but I'm going to say no for now, we're not going to salt the password. We can then see some of the information regarding this uh, new remote. We didn't have to go to G Drive, uh, Google Drive to re-approve or anything because we're actually going to work with the existing remote we have configured, albeit the content will be encrypted. So I'm just going to confirm that yes, that's okay. And we now have two drives, or two remotes you can see. G Drive, which is Drive, and G Drive Crypt, which is a crypt remote. Uh, we can press E and select one to edit. Uh, we can copy, we can change the configuration. Um, but for now we're going to quit and come out of this. And it takes us back to the R clone directory as before. So now we're going to create a folder, a file, sorry. Um, and I'm going to call this one passwords. My password for email is password1. You should never put your passwords in a, a file like this. You should never use a password like password1, but never mind. For this we'll do. Um, and my bank pin is one, two, three, four. There we go. So we've got a document on our local machine there. It's pretty private and it's fairly secure because only we have access to this machine. But when I upload this document into Google Drive, regardless of how secure we think Google Drive is, I don't want anyone being able to see the contents of that file. And you may have a number of reasons to do that. So we're going to now move that file into our remote drive, okay? Our encrypted remote drive. So again, we're going to do the same thing as before. Our clone, copy, not to forget, the verbose. Uh, passwords, dot text, and this time, G drive crypt. And I'm not going to change it from that. So I'm targeting the root of the G drive crypt, which is, inside of this private stuff folder. I'm just going to press return. Okay, so that's now run. You can see again, it took 25 seconds. I don't know why um, I paused the video. Um, so you can see there that it's um, it's transferred the contents. So it transferred 61 bytes, uh, one file, uh, and, and you can see how long it took. So on our local machine, as before, the file doesn't get touched. It's still we can see the content of it. If we go back to our G drive and jump into the, and obviously we didn't, we sent it to the root, but the root was the private stuff folder, not the root of the G drive. 
So now if we go into the private stuff folder, and we can see the encrypted file is, uh, is displayed there. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So I'm not going to labor it too much, but if you, so, so the first thing you can do is, we, is some examples like I've done there just now to, to copy one file across. You can then practice copying folders across. Um, and then from that, regardless, you know, you can think about how you, you wish to use it. So you may wish to set up um, a Windows batch script to try and automate the process so that you don't have to do this manually. In the next video we're going to take a look at our clone browser and our clone browser is this process we have done here using a, a user interface rather than the command line but I think it's important that you understand the command line side of how our clone works before you move on to the, the user interface uh, method. If you have any questions please comment below and I'll help you if I can. Thanks for watching.